I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dip dye some yarn and then glaze it and see what we end up with. Glazing is a dyeing technique where when you apply dye to yarn, it can be all over or maybe not, but when you apply it, the dye strikes the yarn really, really quickly and it gives us a very shallow application of color. And so you can kind of see a little bit of what the color beneath the glaze is, whether it was white or you had another color kind of peeking through. And so the effect is gorgeous and sometimes tricky because not every color works well as a glaze. You need a color that will strike really, really quickly. And I've played around with this a lot in multiple different videos. And so we're going to try uh, one of the techniques that has worked for me in the past and well, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Before we jump in, I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to my lab partner today, Addie. Addie, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dive Hot Weekly. And I'm also going to take this opportunity to say subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Today we are going to dye 200 grams of Wolta Dye Force Crazy 8 Worsted Weight Yarn. This is a very, very bouncy 100% superwash merino yarn. It is actually eight ply. There are four two ply yarns that are spun together that gives us this bounce and it has a lot of twist to it which ends up working out really well for a glazed application. Sometimes you'll notice towards the end of the video when I'm showing off the glaze, you'll see that I untwist the yarn a little bit to show off the glaze. And there you can see all those little two plies. And I do that because even on one strand, you might see the color strike more to one side than the other. But anyway, I'm going to add on some removable nylon zip ties to our yarn. I like having this instead of tying on an extra like fabric tie of some kind. Plus it makes it really easy to have something to pick up the yarn with through the dyeing process. And I'm going to go pre-soak the yarn in some plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. The plan is to dip dye our yarn in orange, into a bright orange, so we'll have multiple different depths of shade visually on the yarn, and then glaze that with a gray. And to do that, I'll be using uh, Dharma's True Black Acid Dye, because I know that this color does work well as a glaze. At least, I think it does. I tend to do a lot of glazing with navy, because I know that works really, really well. <laughs> but we'll, we'll see what we end up with here. One concern that I have with this particular color combination is that whatever we do may end up turning brown. I've mixed blazing orange and true black together in the past and very quickly if you have too much black relative to the orange it does feel brown versus uh, like a deep orange which I know is part brown pretty much is that deep orange so yeah that's something that we might end up with, but if we do, that's okay. We're gonna give this a shot. I just hope that I pick the right proportions of color as we go about this. And the nice thing is that when it comes to the actual glazing portion, if I do too little color and we wish, ooh, it's a little too subtle, I wish I had a little bit more in there, that is something that we can do. We can do it again. So uh, that is not a concern. <laughs> While the yarn is pre-soaking, I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask with P100 filters, safety glasses, and gloves to measure out and dissolve the dye that we are going to use for our two-step project today. I weighed out one gram of Dharma's Blazing Orange Acid Dye. This is going to be the dye we use for dip dyeing and is a good amount for dip dyed with 200 grams of yarn. Because if we need to add more, we can add more very easily. Next, I measured out 0.3 grams of Dharma's True Black Acid Dye, and then I dissolved all of this in some hot tap water, not worrying about the volume because I'm planning on using all of the dye in each cup for each of the steps. I picked 0.3 grams of True Black to use on 200 grams of yarn because that gave a soft gray glaze when I used this proportion in the past. And as I mentioned at the beginning, if it feels like it's not really showing up and it's a little too subtle, we can do a second glazing round with more dye. I filled up my dye bath a lot today, so <laughs> we'll see how this goes. I'm heating up 24 cups of water and I'm gonna add six tablespoons of white vinegar uh, for our dip dye. And I think that was six. 
Okay, now our dye bath is warm. It is not hot yet. So I feel okay not just, you know, pouring in our dye, but also putting the plastic cup in the water to rinse it out. If the dye bath is warm, I wouldn't do that with one of these plastic cups because then the cup would melt and warp. Um, but now we're going to stir this up a little bit and we're going to let this heat up until we get to about a boil so then we can dip dye our yarn. All right, we are nice and steamy. I'm going to reduce the heat to low just so that way we can see a little better. Okay, and I squeezed out most of the extra liquid from our pre-soak. And we're gonna start slowly dip dyeing the yarn. I guess I will turn the heat up a little more. Some of the wool to dye for skeins are a bit longer than the corresponding knit picks ones. Blazing orange is not a color I've used very much. It is certainly a nice intense orange color, but I'm not sure how quickly it binds. The nice thing is that we do not need to use 100% of the dye that we have here in the dye bath. Uh, we can choose to remove the yarn at any point because we will be over dyeing it again at, with the glazed step. And so if we want to maintain this gradient from dark to light, we can do that. But you can see actually a lot of the color has cleared. And so I could also just put all the yarn in for a little while, but the thing that's holding me back is that I want to make sure that we have some contrast between the deepest orange and the lightest. And sometimes, sometimes if you add things in a little too fast then you can end up getting like more color that kind of binds to the lightest side when that may not be what you want. But it seems like we're doing okay here. Now, the brightest orange I, we have is definitely towards the middle. Uh, one end is definitely a little bit deep, but I think I am gonna put everything in now. And I'm gonna heat this maybe for just like five, well, let's do 10 minutes, and then we'll remove the yarn. It's been 10 minutes, and we definitely have some more color on here than we did before. But I'm okay with that because we still have like a gradient of our orange on here. Um, and it's very, very pretty. I think the end is looking a little bit yellow on camera. It feels more orange in person. Now there are some yellows left behind here. And I think today we are gonna be just saying goodbye to these yellows because for our glazing step, I want to start off with a cold dye bath. So while I set the orange yarn aside to cool for a little bit at least, we're gonna reset the pot. The burner is still warm, so even though I have just reset the pot with 24 cups of cold tap water, it might warm up a little bit, but that is okay. I'm now going to add one cup of white vinegar to our dye bath. We want high acid, and the reason to start cold is a little counterintuitive. We want the dye to strike to our yarn really quickly, but I also want to be able to get all of the yarn into the pot uh, before it strikes really fast, so that way we can get a bit of glaze all over the yarn versus just on the part that goes in first. And so that's why I like to start cold. Um, once our yarn cools off more, we're gonna add it to the pot, move it around, and then start heating things up slowly. And then as our black dye that I'm adding right now, as it reaches the yarn, as it slowly comes into contact with the yarn, because we have a large volume of water here, it should bind to the outside of the yarn really quickly with this acid concentration. But the whole process will be slow overall because of the volume and the temperature. And so I think that this should give a really fun effect. Our yarn is still very steamy, so I am, again, gonna let that cool a bit before we go ahead and start. It's been about 30 minutes since we dipped out our orange dye. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the heat now, um, but we're gonna add the yarn into this pot, quickly stir, and then not touch the yarn until we're done. I have my tongs on hand. So we are going to quickly 
add the yarn in. I forgot that it's cold so I can put my hands in, stir things around to distribute the dye, and now we're gonna stop, and I'm not gonna touch it. And so we have a high volume of water, so that way the yarn isn't compressed, so that way the dye can access the yarn a little bit all over. And now we just have to wait and trust the process, which is the hardest part of glazing. Uh, but anyway, I will check back in in I, around 30 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes, and we'll see how it's going. Keep in mind that we only had 0.3 grams of the black dye in here, which is only 0.15 grams of dye per 100 grams of yarn. It's been about 20 minutes, and I don't know. Certainly, I see a lot of brown here with the lightest orange. I'm not sure how glazed it feels. It's hard to tell while things are still wet though. Ah. I'm moving it. Okay, lifting it up, I see some, some elements of glaze. I'm gonna put it back down and we're gonna trust the process. Yes, I see some glaze in there. There's definitely though some of the black dye that has penetrated further, but on some of the deeper sections where the orange was more saturated, moving it, I can see like in here, a bit of a glazed section. So, okay, I gotta trust the process, trust the process. <laughs> I think I'll let it go another 30 minutes or so from here. I'm not expecting to see a dramatic shift from where we are now. It has been 30 minutes and I'm gonna turn the heat off now. I do see glazing um, here on the lighter edge. You can see how shallow some of this black is. It's just that the combination of that with the orange, oh, some yellow has leaked out. The combination of that with the orange uh, results in the color feeling a lot more brown overall, but I think it's still really beautiful. Um, I am going to go ahead and leave this to cool for a couple of hours in the dye bath and then we'll go ahead and wash it. I might remove it after a little while, but for now it can cool here. Let's wash our glazed yarn and I feel like we're a little overexposed. The gray, well really it's black dye, but the gray color is so light on top of this yarn. Um, I'm going to put, actually put a picture on the screen of the yarn that I dyed at the same proportion in the past. So you can see that ultimately if it was white beneath it, the gray black glaze would be fairly subtle overall. But I really like it. I'm not sure if this is what Addie and I were anticipating, but once I was looking at how orange and black combined again to figure out proportions I wanted to use. I had a feeling we'd end up here, but this part, ooh, the deepest part is so, so pretty. Now, getting colors to glaze is not something that I am completely comfortable with still, um, just in the sense that I can't really predict when it'll happen. Sometimes I'll try dyeing a tonal yarn and then it'll end up feeling glazed. And I'm like, okay, what did I do here that had that happen? Did I not stir enough or what? And I love the effect. And so I'm never sad when it happens by accident, but uh, it's something that I'm starting to feel more comfortable with. But yeah, I'm just curious about how to best make it happen going forward. But anyway, I'm not seeing any color bleed, which is great. I'm gonna finish rinsing out the soap, then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry so we can take a closer look. And here is our finished yarn that started with a dip dyed orange and then we glazed it with some true black to give it some gray overtones. Now that the yarn is dry, you can really feel the two-toned nature of the color. You can see how on this strand we've got some of the black on one side, not the other, and in some of these more pastel areas, like here, if I were to untwist it a little bit, you can see that the color penetration was really just on the outside of that twist. You can see that it's just such light coverage. As the yarn gets darker, you can still see the glaze. You see that sort of grayish color, but the orange underneath is still showing through. 
The glaze is still visible in our darkest areas of yarn. It is a lot more subtle, but you can see that subtle over layer of color on top of the brighter orange. The thing about glazing yarn is that sometimes it's really hard to tell if it worked, if you got the effect you were going for, until the yarn is dry. Because since fabric and fibers appear much darker while they are wet than they do when they are dry, uh, it makes it harder to notice those subtle differences when the color that you had beneath your glaze is much deeper. So I was definitely nervous, but it worked out great. Addie, thank you so much for being my lab partner for today's episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you love the yarn. If you would like to learn how you can become a lab partner, uh, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Of course, the shop is also filled with ready-to-ship hand-dyed yarn uh, that has been featured in various YouTube videos. You'll find a link down in the video description. Addie, thank you again for being my lab partner. I have more glazing projects planned for this year. I would love to try glazing with, say, royal purple as that deeper color. Mostly I do navy or black, but we did get success with pink orchid ones. So there are many different colors you can use for that outer layer. What you're looking for is a dye color that strikes fast. A color that tends to spread a lot more, like emerald green or a neon fluorescent color, those dyes aren't great candidates for the over part of the glaze. They're great for the under layer, but for what you're glazing over, you really want that outside color to be one that you know will strike quickly so you can get this airbrushed effect. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.